Have you ever heard this present as American as apple pie? Actually, apple pie is not American at all, and neither are apples. Apples, in fact, are native to Asia, and they've been in America for um, about as long as the Europeans. Early settlers to America brought apple tree cuttings and seeds. So for centuries, we have been led to believe that an ingenious pioneer woman was the first person to stuff juicy apples into two layers of pastry dough. However, according to historians, the first apple pie recipe was written in Europe around 1381. So the apple is clearly not American, so it is. The pumpkin. But who wants to go around saying I'm as American as pumpkin? But it is true. Pumpkins are one of the oldest domestic American plants. They've been grown in America from around 7500 BC to 5000 BC. That was a very long time ago. We use pumpkins as a sign of fall, like pumpkins and pumpkins products found everywhere. Here, here, and here. So today we're going to learn to paint the pumpkin. Let's begin. Okay, here are the supplies you're going to need. An art board, anything old will do. We just don't want the stuff to get onto the table. Some cardstock. Some paint brushes. Some Crayola. And some paint. And also, we have a cup full of water to wash the brushes in. We have some tape. We have a plate for the paint, and we have a paper towel to brush the paint, the paint brushes on. To get started, we're going to use some tape, and we're going to use the tape to tape our project, our paper, our cardstock to our artboard. So I'm using some rat masking tape, or you can use blue painter's tape. And we have some 90 pound index. We like to use index paper because, especially for painting, because you can't um, scrub through it with your paint when it gets wet. It holds up very, very well. It holds up very, very well to um, paint. So I'm taking my tape, and Maury's almost like she's beating me high here. She's like, we got a little race going on. Um, I turn my tape inside out, so the sticky side's out. And I'm going to tape all four quarters of my artwork down. And let's see, Maury's like racing me here because she wants to win this contest of tape corner turning. One, two, three. My fourth one is down. And, woo! Uh-oh, I think I won. But that's okay. Yeah. I got in your way. All right. Mine got stuck. All right, so Maury, are you going to do your project. Are you going to do your pumpkin landscape, which is side to side like this, or are you going to do it portrait, which is up and down? Uh, landscape. Okay, you're doing your landscape. I'm going to do my pumpkin portrait, so you can see example of both ways. All right, so now a pumpkin, ladies and gentlemen, is, is a round object. Now, some pumpkins are tall and skinny. Mm -hmm. Some are wide and thick. Let's use fat. that word. Yeah, fat. <laughs> so, it doesn't matter how you draw your circle. Pumpkins aren't perfectly circular. They lay on the ground sometimes, and where they're laying on the ground, um, they're flattened out a little bit. So, don't worry about getting a big, large, beautiful um, circle. But what I want us to do is to focus on filling our space. Because we don't want to put a little itty bitty pumpkin in a great, great big space. All right, are you ready? Yeah, it was, just, it was peeling off, so I'm peeling it off. All right. All right, so I'm going to draw a nice, large, elongated uh, circle to do my pumpkin. And I know it doesn't show up very well, 
The reason I'm using yellow to make my initial circle is if, like, if I had made a mistake and made it too small, I can always go back over and I can make it bigger and my paint um, is darker than the yellow color and it will cover the crayon work. Alright, so I went back and I've got a nice elongated circle. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some rib. Let's demonstrate. Alright, so more you take your orange crayon, you're going to make a dot at the top of your pumpkin and a dot at the bottom of your pumpkin. Okay, and then I'm going to take and I'm going to make some circular lines like uh, forward C's and backward C's so they connect to my two dots. Good. Good. Alright, so we're done with our crayons for now. So I'll take you go ahead and take your crayons. And you need your crayon paper. <laughs> Put them all over here on our side table. And I'm going to grab some brushes and some paper towels. One for you, one for me. Um, you get a flat brush and a round brush. And I get a flat brush and a round brush. And we need some water to rinse our brushes. Now, I want you to notice that we have two colors on our paper plate right here. See the colors on our paper plate? Uh, what two colors do we have, Maury? Uh, yellow and red. Now, both yellow and red, they're what we call primary colors. Okay? Mm -hmm. When we mix them together, we get a secondary color. What color do you think we get, Maury? Orange. You are right. Red and yellow make orange. So that's why I've got some red and yellow. And I'm going to put a little bit of just plain straight up orange in the middle because we might want to use a little bit of it. But primarily, we're going to use the yellow and the orange. And the reason that we're going to use it instead of straight up orange is because we want different shades of orange in our pumpkin. So. Um, I'm going to start out by dipping my flat brush into the red paint and then I'm going to do what I call double dipping. Okay, I've got some paint of red on my brush and We're then not I'm going to double dip yep, into my yellow. So that without stirring it, I, I have both red and yellow on my paintbrush. Now, because red was the first color on my paintbrush. I'm going this time. I'm going to start at the top because the yellow is going to be more prominent and I'm going to take and start at my top and I'm going to drag my line down and I can already see that I had too much yellow or I'm sorry I had too much red on that paintbrush so I'm going to dip again into yellow. Oh you have a beautiful shade of orange going there Maury. You have that exactly the perfect amount. And I'm going to dip more yellow until I'm happy with the, and add more yellow until I'm happy with the color of orange that I've got going on my pumpkin. Oh, it looks like a fall leaf. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. And I'm going to continue this double dipping technique as I paint my pumpkin. So here's yellow and then red this time. And because red's the second color on my paintbrush, I'm going to drag it up because I want more red on the bottom and more yellow at top at the top so that I my pumpkin looks like it's got some highlights going. And I want you to notice the beautiful shades of different color mm -hmm. orange you got going in your, yeah. your pumpkin. You've got a little bit more yellow there. All right, so double dip, yellow, red, red's on the bottom. I'm going to pull it up. Get more red at the bottom. And when we use a flat brush, we use it like a broom. It kind of pushes the paint around so we have a beautiful blending of color. We actually get into some real orange. I'm going to drag some orange through that color so I've got a little bit more orange going. I'm going to put some yellow in the center for my 
highlights on this on this little guy. Oops. And then I'm going to drag more yellow in at the top. use more paint, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's going not slowly. so dry. That's good that it goes slowly. I have a dragon it around. Okay. And then on mine, I want more red highlight at the bottom. So I'm going to lightly add some red down here. I'm going to take the side of my brush, a little bit into the side. Because red will become shadows in the pumpkin. And the yellow is the highlight. Okay, I'm going to wait right there for more. Don't forget to give yourself more yellow paint in the middle. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and dip into your yellow right now. So that area can be color. That light's good. Good. And then you can always add some, just straight up, a little bit of straight up orange to that. Take some straight up red. Oh, less, way less, yeah. And use the side of your brush like this and drag it kind of around the sides. Right here? Yeah. Or right here. Both sides. So you can clean up those edges and so you can make it have some shadow. Yeah, good. Around your edges. Keep going. You need a little bit more red paint. Fill yeah, it out later. Yeah, this way. That's good. All right. And then grab, grab some orange and add it to that and fill in your white spaces. Good. Nice. Okay. Now do your other side over here with some red. Teeny. And try to drag the side of the brush like this. Good. Good. You'll fill in with some orange. Good. Perfect. I wouldn't do anything else to that pumpkin. So I'm going to add some brown paint into my palette here. And with my brown paint, I'm going to take, a, and I'm going to dip my paintbrush in. I'm going to pull a little bit to the side. I'm going to add some orange to it. And I'm going to make, making kind of a, like a brown, brown orange color that we can use to do the ribs of our pumpkin. All right, now we're ready to rinse our big flat brushes for now. So I'm rinsing, and then I'm going to take a right there. Oh, paper towel right here, and I'm going to pull that paintbrush through to clean my paintbrush. Ready to rinse our big flat brushes for now. So I'm rinsing. And then I'm going to take a brush. A round brush works like a pencil. I'm going to hold it on the middle part. And I'm, I have some brown orange paint on here. And I'm going to take and I'm going to start kind of at the top of my pumpkin. I'm going to think about where I want my stem to come out. I want my stem to be right here in this area here. So when I do my pumpkin, 
it looks like your stem would naturally go more there. I'm going to start at that point, and I'm going to make my C lines that go all the way around. Oops. Like so. And if I made them a little bit crooked, I can clean it up by going back in with some straight orange. mistake you could always fix it. All right. I like that pretty good right there. All right. Then I'm going to make another one. This one here. You might want to like go back in and add a little bit of orange in here like I'm doing so they're just not quite so thick. Our little round yeah. brushes aren't quite small enough and so our paint is going on a little too thicker than what I like it to go on. So I'm first going to make the line. But we can clean that up by going back in and doctoring it with orange, yellow, and red. Right, so that's pretty. Like that. And I'm doing all my little cleanup job work with my little round brush. All right, let me go back in. And I want another rib. See right here. Yeah. Yeah. ready for our stem. Alright, so I rinse my little round brush here. I'm going to add some green to our little palette here. And with my green, I'm just going to have paint in my stem of my pumpkin. some brown in there to one side. And I really can carry out little dots all around so it looks like it's actually growing. Good. Now we're ready for background. So I have a clean plate. Just uh, stick it on top of this one. Squish it down. And I'm going to use blue and purple paint in the background. Uh, purple and blue are both cool colors. And there we go. Purple and blue. Purple and blue are both cool colors, like I just said. And um, blue is the complementary color to orange. And so it's going to make our pumpkin really stand out. And I'm going to add some black. All right. So I'm going to take a round brush, holding it once again like a pencil. I'm going to dip it into my black paint. And I'm going to make a line out the side of my pumpkin to give my pumpkin an area to stand on. And I'm going to outline my pumpkin. Be very careful to draw a nice line around my pumpkin with my black paint. And the reason that I am outlining it is because I want to get as close to the orange pumpkin as I can get without going over into my pumpkin. 
it's going to give me a nice clean edge. Good. Try to remember to use it like a pencil. Nice clean edge. Pulling down and around. Be very, very careful. Here. Once I get that done, I'm going to rinse a little round brush. Good. Nice. And then I'm going to go with my, in with my flat brush. And once again, I'm going to use some black. And I want to pull maybe some blue or some purple into this black. Enjoying this awesome adventure, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Happy arting! Pumpkin!